Yo, what is up? It is your boy Zether, back at it again with what if Deku had Metal Bat's Fighting Spirit? This is something that a lot of you actually ended up wanting in the community tab post, and I figured, you know what, I'm gonna cover this before I cover all Transing Deku. Everybody's done that one, and I feel like Metal Bat deserves a little bit of love, so, you know, I decided to cover this one instead before I actually do Ultra Instinct. But with that being said, guys, I don't want to hold you guys too long during the intro, so we're just gonna go ahead and, um, uh, get started. <laughs> Okay, so how our story is actually going to start off is the moment that Deck was born, most like all of my other stories. Obviously, we gotta add a couple of changes to Deku, and the number one change that we're actually going to be adding to him is that Deku is essentially going to look exactly like Metal Bat. And yes, he is gonna have the black hair instead of the green hair. We're just gonna say that instead, Hisashi's hair is black, and that ended up being the dominant out of the two hair colors. So Let's just say that Izuku's childhood is a little bit different, except he's a little more hot-headed and a lot more, like, just doesn't take anything from anybody. He enjoys a good fight, and he's always kind of been like this ever since his parents can remember. He grew up being on a little bit of a rowdy side, and this actually meant that Deku and Bakugo were actually great friends. They hit it off, off, off rip. And, I mean, they've honestly been pretty cool friends ever since they started, you know, getting to know each other from Inko and, well, uh, Mitsuki's relationship that they actually have together. With that being said, though, a couple of things are actually going to start changing once Bakugo gets his quirk. Because, yes, he is actually going to get his quirk before Deku can. His quirk is, of course, going to be explosions, nitroglycerin, you know, the usual. But, Deku's going to actually have a quirk in this version, and the quirk is actually going to activate one day... When Bakugo is essentially just going over to pick on some random kid. See, when Bakugo does this, Deku would basically see what Bakugo is doing and he would tell him to back off of him like he hasn't done anything. As Bakugo would say, what are you talking about, Deku? Get out of the way. This kid is over here getting in my way saying he has that he knows somebody with a better quirk than me. As Deku would basically look at him weird and say, Bakugo, you're really going to fight him over that? As he would say, yes, I am. Now get out of my way. As Deku would look at him and say, I don't think I will. As, of course, you know, we can't have Deku without that heroic spirit. So we're going to have the fighting spirit and the heroic spirit meshing into one. And uh, <laughs> it's going to be pretty dope. Anyways, we would then have Bakugo saying, well, if you're not going to get out of my way, Deku, then I'm going to have to move you myself. And that's actually the first time that he would ever call him that. As this is when he would proceed to charge at Deku saying, ah, as Deku would say, get away from him. Throwing a punch right at Bakugo as Bakugo would be sent, you know, back and Bakugo would hold his face as he says, you hit me. As he would look towards Deku and Deku would say that he's not going to back down. As Bakugo would shoot an explosion at Deku, injuring him a little bit as Deku would say, okay, that's it. As he would charge back at Bakugo and he would be even stronger than before. As Bakugo would not go down and Deku would not go down without a fight either. As just imagine two little four-year-old kids, you know, hitting as hard as they possibly can. <laughs> a little bit of a funny scene, but, you know, what can you do about it? Anyways, we would then have Deku and Bakugo who essentially are, you know, pretty much just uh, fighting each other. When Deku keeps getting these little boosts to his strength by getting more and more damage from Bakugo. As by the end of everything, Deku actually ends up defeating Bakugo, seeing that his uh, fighting spirit elevated his power level, I guess you could say. Or his fighting strength in what it really is. Now, with that being said, after this fight, you know, the teachers would actually end up having to call Inko and Mitsuki. And Deku and Bakugo would be looking at each other, trying to throw hits at each other while they're basically getting pushed away. Saying, let me at him, let me at him, you know, just, just the usual stuff. Now, with that being said, we would then have Deku going to the Quirk Doctor, as he would end up being told that he actually does have a quirk. Seeing as it's been about three weeks since, you know, he was late for it, and Deku would basically go to the Quirk Doctor, as they would tell him that he definitely does have a quirk, but they don't really know what it is, since it's nothing flashy. It might be, like, enhanced durability or something, but they can't really be too sure. As they would tell Deku that he doesn't have that pinky toe joint, so he would most likely develop a quirk later on. As Deku would look at his mother and say, well, I guess, I guess I have a quirk, but we don't know what it is. As he would go back to school and he would end up telling people that that's what the doctor told him, that he's going to 
basically just be a late bloomer or something. As the people in the class would say that, oh, well, at least you're not going to be quirkless, right? As Bakugo would come in out of nowhere and say, <laughs> it doesn't matter what he gets, he's always going to be beneath me. As some of the people in the class would say, wait, Bakugo, but didn't you guys fight the other day and you guys were pretty even? As Bakugo would look at them and say, Ugh, as he would go off and, you know, we would just have Deku and Bakugo have this little bit of a rivalry. As the next couple of years would go by, and we're just going to say that they're both about 8 years old at this point. Deku has still grown up loving a good fight. And over the, these past couple of years, Deku and Bakugo have definitely got into some pretty uh, weird altercations with each other where they fight each other off a lot. And we would have Deku and Bakugo training on their own, basically doing the most basic things you could think of. Seeing as they are relatively pretty young, and uh, it wouldn't be too safe to say. How old did I say they were? Six or eight? Let's just go with eight. Uh, yeah, let's go with eight. In case I didn't say it before, we're going to go with eight. Anyways, with that being said, we would then have Deku and Bakugo look at each other. In class, as they would proceed to basically stare each other down, and right before they could actually get into it, the teacher would look at them as he would say, Not again, guys. Can you guys calm down? As we would then have the rest of the people in the class having their phones out and aiming it at them as, you know, they thought they were about to get into it, but they didn't end up doing that. Anyways, with that being said, that fight would have been, you know, ended up being stopped, and we would then have Deku going home. As, you know, we're just going to have it so that Deku's basically over here training himself, right? He's over here trying to do some parkour. Yeah, let's say parkour, right? He's doing parkour, and on one of the one of the, one of of the the landings that he actually does, he actually ends up hurting himself a bit. And after he keeps running from getting up after that, he would realize that he's faster than before. As he would actually test the theory out. He would think about things, and he would, you know, wonder. Wonder about this. Every time he and Bakugo fight, he gets stronger progressively. He thought he got to keep that, but apparently that's not how his quirk works. As Deku would proceed to basically just keep doing the parkour and failing, hurting himself over and over, as he would notice that every time he would feel stronger and faster, as he would finally realize what's going on. This must be his quirk! As he would go to the quirk doctor once again and they would examine him, telling him that he has some sort of quirk which essentially allows him to become stronger by the more damage he takes. As Deku would proceed to basically look around at his mother, and they would proceed to tell him that they actually don't have a name for this quirk. It's something unlike anything else that they've ever seen. As they would look towards Deku, and they would basically ask his mother, Inko, if she knows anybody in her family who has something like that. If she would say no, and we would then have the doctors essentially looking at Deku as they would say, Well, I guess you're going to name your own quirk, kid. As we would then have Deku looking at the doctors, and we would have him think about this. As... He would then think about something that all the kids always tell him. They always say that he has such a great fighting spirit to stand up to somebody like Bakugo, who has such a great quirk, and he, who doesn't even know his quirk yet, can stand up to him. As Deku would, you know, strengthen his resolve, he would then proceed to look, look at the doctor as he would tell him that he wants his quirk to be named Fighting Spirit. As the doctor would look at him and he would say that that's actually a splendid name for his power. As he would tell him that that's a great name for a quirk if he's ever heard one. And he would proceed to look at Deku as he would say, well, it's official. Your quirk name is going to be Fighting Spirit. <laughs> as Deku would smile and he would proceed to go back to class the very next day. Telling the rest of his classmates that that's what his quirk name is going to be. As this, this is when I'm actually going to mention something that I figured I might as well just throw in here. Deku is, yes, going to have a younger sister. Inko and Hisashi would have gone down and they would have proceeded to do a little bit of studying of their own. As you already know, Inko and Hisashi would have ended up having Deku's little sister a couple year, uh, a couple months later. And Deku would now be a proud older brother. We would then have Deku essentially going through the next couple of years, you know, just training himself and, you know, trying to make himself stronger physically without having to take damage. As he would proceed to do a bunch of, you know, workouts to the point where by the time that he's about 16 years old yeah let's say that they, they go to ua it's oh wait no that's too old let's say that by the time that he's 15 years old he's gonna look literally exactly like metal bat and his favorite thing to wear is obviously gonna be you know some some uh some tank tops some some pretty baggy pants and you know some forces that yeah, yeah, yeah that's his drip that's his drip and throughout these last couple of years, he definitely would have ended up taking a liking to using bats to fight. 
he definitely would have ended up getting into a couple more altercations with Bakugo, resulting in them both actually ending up getting kicked out from, actually no, 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 almost getting kicked out from their schools, and that from that point on, they basically stopped fighting. After a couple of years of that happening, they would basically train together on like a little bit of a junkyard as they would essentially just help each other grow the more that they hung out with each other. After a while, their differences would be pushed aside and they would have a little bit of a Goku and Vegeta relationship where essentially they kind of see each other eye to eye and they kind of become friends slowly and slowly. As a couple of years are going to pass, and I'm just going to say that by this point, Deku of course is 15, and we would of course have a Bakugo who's actually much more, you know, stronger than his original counterpart. We're just going to say that about, let's say 20% stronger than the, than the Bakugo that we have in canon, so I'm going to say that he's developed moves like the AP shot and things like that, and he's about as strong as he was after, you know, training his quirk a little bit in the forest training arc. Let's just say that that's as strong as he is. No, let's say he's about as strong as that with, you know, of course, the couple of upgrades. Deku, however, would have gotten the most improvements from hanging out with Bakugo, seeing as they always fought each other and they would have definitely always go blow for blow. Thing is, though, some, t like, Bakugo would have a hard time beating Deku, and he would most of the time end up in a little bit of a, of a stalemate, I guess you could say, with actually the score being with Deku always winning. No matter how much Bakugo tried, he just couldn't defeat Deku every time that he would hurt him he would just have Deku get stronger and every time that he would try to stay away from him and tire him out it would be as if Deku just can't run out of stamina it's it's crazy it's it's completely out of this world but I mean I guess that's how this society has you know progressing is everybody has quirks so the impossible oh guys let me fix up my position so the impossible has become possible throughout these last couple of years and this is nothing but the normal for them now as we would then have Deku and Bakugo essentially looking at each other one day as they're done getting their training on. And this is when we're going to say that this is about uh, two days before the Sludge Bone incident. As they would look at each other and Deku would toss his can of soda at Bakugo. As Bakugo would catch it and say, <laughs> crazy to think that a while ago we were at each other's throats. As Deku would chuckle and say, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty, uh, pretty good fights we had back then. As Baku would say, <laughs> you're telling me? As he would say, dude, you never went down. And Deku would say, and you never let, and you never, you know, back down even when you were bloodied and beaten. As Baku would smile, and we would then have them both looking at each other. As they would begin to pretty much acknowledge each other's strength. And this is when we would then have them both basically going to class. We would basically have them both just hanging out for a couple of days as they'd be chilling out after that training and they would then decide that they're actually going to be training but on their own for these next following 10 months as of course we would have the sludge bone thing happen with you know everybody in the class you know deku goes to ua with bakugo they're actually both gonna hop on the desk and declare themselves the next number one and two pro heroes of japan as bakugo and deku would make that bold statement and the class would actually look at them saying that they actually have the biggest chance of doing it. I mean, they're the dynamic duo. They might as well create an agency together as they would look at each other and they would say, huh, we might just do that. As they would basically go their separate ways and Bakugo would ask Deku would essentially tag along with him to go to the arcade. But Deku would say he can't that his mom's actually waiting for him at home. As we would then have Deku essentially walking on his on his way home, as the sludge villain would come out of the tunnel saying, Give me your body, kid! And this one we would have Deku essentially dodging, just barely, as he would end up scraping his knee and he would end up saying, Ah! Ah! As we would then have the sludge villain saying, Give me your body, kid! I didn't know that freak was in town! As we would then have Deku looking at him, telling him he doesn't know what he's talking about, but he's not going to be getting his body. And that he might as well just give up now, as he would grab his bat, which he actually always carries in his bag, and he would proceed to basically whack at the sludge villain, as the sludge villain would pretty much just smile, as he would proceed to cover Deku his entire body, as we would then have All Might coming in out of nowhere to save Deku at the last moment, as Deku would have been struggling and ripping at the sludge villain, trying to claw his way out, and his strength would have actually been rising, and right as All Might was about to throw a punch, we would then have Deku, you know, pushing himself up through nothing but sheer will, saying, LET ME OUT! As we would then have, you know, the sledge moment saying, what? This kid. As All Might would see that there's a kid inside there and he would say, DETROIT SMASH! As of course, we would have the sledge moment be blown off of Deku. And 
This is when we would then have Deku essentially looking around as he would then notice that All Might just saved him. He would say, All Might? And All Might would look at him telling him, yes, kid, it's me. He would say he was actually kind of impressed by the way that he was able to survive that villain. Most pro heroes wouldn't have been able to handle that. As he says, thank you. And he then asks for All Might's autograph. As All Might would then proceed to basically tell him what's going on. And this is when Deku would basically say, oh, all right. And this is when, you know, All Might would basically say that he's going to go off. And Deku would proceed to tell Deku. Oh, no, no, no. Not Deku would proceed to tell Deku. But Deku would proceed to tell All Might if he can become a hero. As All Might would look at Deku and he would tell him that he can become a hero. Depending on what his quirk is. As we would then have Deku telling All Might that his quirk is actually fighting spirit. And he would explain what comes with the quirk that he actually has. As All Might would look at Deku and he would proceed to say, huh, fighting spirit, huh? Sounds like an interesting quirk. I definitely think you can become a pro hero with that type of power. As we would then have All Might looking at Deku throwing a thumbs up, and Deku would have one more question to ask. He would basically, before he can ask that, All Might would jump off, and right as All Might jumped off, Deku would grab onto All Might's leg. As All Might would say that he's gonna, he's not, he, he's, he can't help him right now. As this is when Deku would basically grab onto his leg even harder and actually begin to hurt him. As All Might would say, kid, oh, okay, we'll land here. As they would then land on top of the building, and we would have Deku basically telling him that he had to ask him one more thing. As All Might would say, kid, I can't. As we would then have Deku saying, I have to ask you. As All Might would say, sheesh. As he would then look at Deku and say, what is it, kid? As he's counting the seconds, not wanting to reveal his small mic form. But right before Deku could actually ask the question, we would then have All Might cough out some blood. As he would then look at Deku and Deku would say, what? Who are you? As he would grip his bat and he would smack All Might on the side of his injury. As All Might would take <laughs> and say, kid, why would you... As Deku would look at him with his eyes glowing red in some anime type scene where, you know, the protagonist is angry or, you know, the female is angry, I guess you could say. As we would then have All Might say, kid, 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 I, I, I swear it's me. As we would then have Deku saying, prove it. As All Might would basically tell him what, what happened and this is when Deku would stand down saying he's sorry for hitting him but he thought he was trying to impersonate All Might. As All Might would understand and he would then proceed to say, sheesh, kid, what's your quirk? As Deku would basically say, De Deku would be, no, 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 he would say, she's kid, I thought your quirk was getting hurt and getting stronger, not being extremely powerful without it. As Deku would say, oh yeah, about that, I trained. As we would then have All Might saying, huh, <laughs> he would laugh and he would proceed to look at Deku as he would say, well, uh, since you're up here, uh, why don't I, uh, why, why don't I, uh, actually train you for the next couple of 10 months, see if, you know, maybe you could get stronger. And this is when Deku would actually accept, as he would proceed to ask All Might if he can actually train a friend of himself, as well, a, a friend of his as well. But right as he's about to ask that, he would then say, wait, me and All Might agree to train different, do different things for training. As we would then have Deku looking at All Might and he would proceed to never say, never mind. As All Might would say, all right. And Deku would then be told to basically meet him at Dogomo Beach the very next day. As of course, Deku would do that and he would meet All Might, you know, right where All Might actually ended up telling him to meet him at. And this is when the training would actually begin. The 10 months of Deku training and cleaning the beach. <laughs> Deku would actually end up cleaning the meat, the beach in about, let's say, four months. Deku would have ended up cleaning the beach in about four months. Getting his muscles even more toned and ripped than they already were. Seeing as he ended up doing a lot more exercise during, you know, the time that he cleaned the beach. And this is when we would then have Deku looking at All Might as he would stand on top of the trash, screaming in the same fashion that Deku did. As All Might would say, this kid is impressive. As we would then have Deku and All Might basically going through normal training. And this is when All Might would look at Deku as he would tell him that the reason he actually trained him was because he wanted to see if Deku would be a worthy successor. As Deku would say, what are you talking about? And we would then have All Might looking at him as he would say that I was training you to see if you would inherit my power. My quirk, this being one for all. <laughs> I almost said all for one. But anyways, we would have All Might saying that as Deck would say, what? You can pass down a quirk? He would say, does this work for everybody? As All Might would look at him and say, no, 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 kid. It's just, it's, it's just my thing. It's how my quirk works. Think of it like a torch that's been passed down from generation to generation to stop an evil, a force of evil, which actually ended up giving my injury. As we would then have Deku questioning All Might on how he got it, but All Might would just kind of tell him that, that he'll tell him on a later date. 
as we would then have All Might rip out a piece of hair, and he would, you know, hand it towards Deku, telling him, eat this. As we would then have Deku saying, you crazy man, I'm not eating that thing. As we would then have All Might saying, kid, it's, 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 for the, it's for the quirk, you gotta eat my DNA. As Deku would say, I swear to God, All Might, if you're playing with me, Oh, as all my would say, <laughs> scary. And we would then have Deku eating the hair. As, you know, this is when Deku would proceed to basically say that he doesn't feel any different, but that that was pretty nasty. As Deku, as uh, all my would say, yeah, uh, that's the same thing I thought too. But anyways, continue with the training. You should feel the effects in about an hour or so. As Deku would go through with the normal training, and they would actually be sparring together. As Deku would be, you know, breaking his, like, tenth bat of, you know, the time that they've been doing this for him. As, at this point, All Might would actually have put in a request to one of the support heroes to basically create him a more durable bat. Something that will never break. As, of course, Deku would basically grab the bat, and, you know, he would definitely be sparring with All Might pretty well. As they'd be going, you know, for some decent blows, and All Might would have ended up landing a blow that struck Deku extremely hard and sent him flying. At this point, his head was bleeding, and he would rush back at All Might, hitting him on the side that he was injured at even harder, as All Might would be sent flying, hurtling. As All Might would then, you know, cough out a ton of blood going back into his, you know, Small Might form. And this is when Deku would begin to throw another uh, another swing at All Might. And right before the swing could connect off um, um, the... the the power of one for all would have charged through the swing as it would create a giant force of wind as Deku would have been using essentially 20% of, of one for all's power as this is when All Might would see that Deku's coated in a thing of red electricity and we would then have All Might looking at Deku saying kid the, the power worked as we would then have Deku you know looking at his hands as he would feel his strength coursing through his body and we would then have him look at All Might as he would say, This power, is this what you feel? As All Might would say, Not quite, I don't get the same effects as you. As we would then have All Might saying that their training is going to end off here. And that uh, they're going to pick it up right up in about uh, two weeks. Seeing as he's going to call an old friend up to see if he can help him train Deku out. As he would end up calling Gran Torino. Yes, the mad lad Gran Torino. And during these two weeks off that Deku has, he would actually use them to hang out with his younger sister, who we're actually going to be calling, uh, Inko, Sin, Inko, Inko Jr.? No, 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 not Inko Jr. We would call her, uh, I don't know. I, I honestly have no clue what to call his sister. But, you know, it would be, she would be kind of like, you know, Deku, uh, Metal Bat's little sister. And we would then have him and her basically just hanging out for the next couple of days. Of course, Deku would have wanted to go train on his own, but she would have basically told him that he promised she was going to hang out with him. As Deku would say, oh yeah, he forgot about that. And she would then proceed to say, well, I guess you got to stay now. As Deku would say, yeah, right. As they would end up keeping hanging out for the next following two weeks. And after the two weeks are over, he would say bye to his little sister and mother. As we would walk out the door and go back to Dagomo Beach to hang out with All Might. And his friend of his, who he doesn't know is actually Gran Torino. As soon as Gran Torino arrives, uh, no, as soon as Deku arrives, he would see an old man with, you know, yellow cape. And these yellow boots and gloves. As he would say, who's the old man? Who's, who's this geezer, All Might? As All Might would say, show a little bit of respect. As we would then have Gran Torino looking at him and say, <laughs> so this is your successor, uh, Toshinori. As we would then have All Might saying, yeah, that's him. And he would then proceed to walk around Deku. As he's, you know, he, hit, he fills him up with his cane. And he would say, seems durable. As he would then proceed to say, I wonder if he can take this. As he would proceed to basically start, you know, barraging Deku with a flurry of kicks and blows. You know, hitting Deku from a lot of angles. As he would use his wind, his jet, jet quirk to basically jet around Deku and start hitting him from different, I guess that's why they call it jet, but from different angles. And we would then have, you know, Deku getting angry as we would begin to charge off for uh, one for all throughout his body. And he would then proceed to basically take in the injury and increase his strength as a whole. As he would then say, enough, old man. As he would drop the bat and he would then throw a punch straight at Gran Torino's jaw. As Gran Torino would be sent flying and he would be crashing into the water. About, let's say, 
uh, 200 feet into the water as Gran Torino would come up to the water and as a wave would come in. And we would then see Deku jumping all the way over here, over there with his baddest. He's about to smack Gran Torino. But right before he could do that, All Might would come in and grab him restraining and telling him that, that that's his master he was about to hit. And he would say that that's an old man regardless of how strong he is. As we would then have Deku looking at All Might as he calms down and looks at Gran Torino. As Gran Torino would proceed to look at Deku and say... That could have gone ugly real quick, as we would then have Deku saying, So, why'd you attack me like that? As he would say, I was just testing you, seeing how strong you were with this power. Seems you can use it quite well at this point. As Deku would say that, well, yeah, I guess he can. As we would then have him, Gran Torino, and All Might basically looking at Deku's, you know, training, which they would put him through. And this is when Gran Torino would notice that Deku only charges one for all within one part of his body. He would proceed to tell Deku to put it through his entire body, and he would then spend the next... Uh, the next two days basically working out how to do that as we're just going to skip on over to the day where Deku finally gets it and he would actually be able to use about 15% of full cowling throughout his entire body seeing as I think that that's a relatively decent amount for Deku to be able to control now this is when Deku would proceed to continue training for the following uh, five months that they have. Yeah, let's say five. As he would end up, by the end of everything, with training with Gran Torino and All Might, I'm going to say that a safe level to put him at is going to be about 30%. He would have mastered about 30% of One For All's power, meaning, spoiler alert, Deku would actually end up getting Black Whip. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be incorporating these things into the story really soon. A lot sooner than in my usual with it. Anyways, with that being said, we would then have Deku, you know, arriving at the day of the UA entrance exam. As he would see his friend Bakugo walking in there. As he would walk up to him and say, hey man, how you been? As Bakugo would say, <laughs> I've been great. I th I'm pretty sure I could be defeat you now, Deku. As Deku would look towards him and say, unlikely. And also, guys, sorry for the police sirens in the back. I don't really know what that is, but yeah, they're gone. Anyways, we would then have Deku and Bakugo smile at each other. As he would say, I'm pretty sure I got stronger. And he would ask Deku what he did. As Deku would say, even if I told you, you wouldn't believe me. As Bakugo would say, really? It was that crazy? And Deku would say, oh yeah, it definitely was. As we would then have them both go inside and take the test. As Deku would barely pass the test. Actually, no. I'm going to keep Deku's normal scores in canon. He's going to retain the same intelligence that his normal counterpart has. But he's kind of going to act a little more dumb and goofy. Of course, he's not going to have that hero analytics book because he's not going to think like that. Instead, he's going to think with his fists and his bat. As of course... I had to have it so that Deku, actually nah, he doesn't even need the bat for the entrance exam. So let's just say he doesn't even take it with him. As Bakugo would ask Deku why he doesn't have his bat with him, he could have taken it in for the exam. As Deku says, really he could? As he says he thought he could only, you know, use his quirk. As Bakugo would just laugh and then say, <laughs> looks like you're not going to do that well. I'm definitely going to break your score. As we would then have them both look at each other and Deku would say, we'll see about that. As he would proceed to basically go outside as they both finished their test and they would go to different training grounds. As Deku would just be standing near the front wearing his, you know, his casual, uh, a casual red tank, red shirt, uh, short sleeve with some black pants and white forces. Yeah, let's just say that that's what he's wearing. As we would then have Deku basically just stand, sitting at the front as a boy with blue, no, actually not. Let's just have Ida not even annoy Deku since if he does that, uh... He gonna get folded in, uh, yeah, in many more ways than one. <laughs> I probably should have done it now that I said that. Some of you guys are probably typing up your comment right now saying, Yo, why did you not have Ida get folded like a lawn chair? As a, uh, come on, let's be a little nice to Ida for once. I usually always kill him. And we'll, we'll kill him later, but not right now. Actually, no, he won't die later. That's crazy. Anyways, we would then have Deku pretty much going into the exam. And, you know, President Mike would do his, there's no countdowns in a real battle. As we would have Deku blitzing on in there using 30 percent full cowling as he would proceed to basically just punch robots and would use black whip to essentially pull some of them towards him as he would hit them both from, with his legs kicking them from each side and some sort of kung fu looking cool you know cinematic thing as we would then have deku going through there destroying a multitude of robots gaining a bunch of points actually as deku would definitely be racking up a ton of points and we would then have deku essentially blitzing on in there just taking down robots left and right this is when we would have deku essentially finishing up as about 10 minutes would have passed and deku at this point would have ended up accumulating 100 
69 points. Type nice in the comments if you made it this far. <laughs> Anyways, nice. Anyways, uh, we would then have Deku basically just chilling as he would continue breaking robots left and right. As a bunch of the people taking the test would begin to run away. As the ground would begin to rumble. And this is when the introduction to the Zero Pointer would come in. As Deku would see that giant thing and Deku would proceed to smile thinking that this is going to be great. He's going to have some good practice. As he would look around for anything that he can use to, you know, use as a bat. As he would then look at one of the robot parts. As he would rip it out of the robot and he would proceed to say, this will do perfectly. As he would proceed to basically start running towards the robot. But right before he would actually get the chance to jump up in the air and smash it. He would then see a Raraka. As Deku would instantly go to grab her before, you know, anything else. And we would then have Deku basically saving a Raraka. As he would then run away with her, and he would then say that he'll take care of the robot later. As he would then run back to where the Zero Pointer was, as the Zero Pointer would go into step at Deku, but Deku would blitz over to one of the buildings that are aside from there, hit the building, and ricochet up to where the Zero Pointer's head is. As he would say, ah, and proceed to smash the Zero Pointer's head clean off. As the Zero Pointer would fall down to the ground in a similar fashion to Deku's 100% smash. As the Zero Pointer would fall to the ground and we would then have All Might smiling proudly at his successor's accomplishment. As we would then have, you know, the rest of the people in there saying that this kid definitely made it in. As we would then have a time skip to when Deku got his letter of acceptance and Deku would of course get in. As during that time, Bakugo and Deku of course would have hung out. And Deku would have actually ended up telling Bakugo what his training consisted of. As he would tell Bakugo that he ended up training with the symbol of peace, All Might. As Bakugo would say, what? You trained with All Might? You're lying. As Deku would say, no, I'm not. As he would show Bakugo a picture that he and All Might took together that Gran Torino was actually in as well. As he would say, and, and you didn't tell me? As Deku would say, what? I thought we were supposed to train different, to, you know, apart from each other. As Bakugo would grit his teeth and he would proceed to say, why how dare as you know we would then have Deku looking at Bakugo as he would slap him on the side and tell him that it'll all be fine he probably got in some great training as well as Bakugo would say that this is not okay as they would basically go to class and of course we gotta have one more person in class 1a the perfect ship for this version of Deku I believe Kendo! Yup, Kendo's gonna be the ship for this one. Anyways, Deku would walk into the class as he would see a girl with some, uh, what hair is Kendo? A ginger? Yeah, she's ginger. Or she's a, she's a redhead? Redhead or ginger? I don't know. Anyways, we would then have Deku walking in the class as, you know, he would then look around with Bakugo as Deku and Bakugo would go to the back, to the back, actually, instead of the front, and they would proceed to lay their legs up on the, on the desks as Deku would look, look around to the, to the, to the room as he would then see Ida walk in and Ida would immediately go towards Bakugo and Deku proceeding to tell them that this is school property and that they need to respect the school more as Bakugo would look at him and tell him, why don't you just P-I-S-S -S off? As I can't say that because I don't want to get demonetized. But anyways, um, you know, Ida would say, how dare you? As Deku would stand up from his desk and he would have his bat to Ida's face. As he would say that if it doesn't bat down now, he's going to break a couple of teeth in his skull. As we would then have Ida walking away from them saying, scoundrels. As we would then have Deku looking around the room. As he would notice Kendo all the way in the front as she had barely walked in. As Deku was actually just about to approach her. But before he could, Aizawa would wake up telling them all to essentially go get changed. As they would go get changed and they would actually meet Aizawa outside. And of course, Mineta would have tried. Actually, no, let's cover this. Let's cover some uh, Deku folding Mineta like a lawn chair. You know, they'd be inside and Baku and Deku would be talking as Kirishima would point out that they're both ripped. What do they do? As they would proceed to tell Kamen uh, Kirishima, sorry, not Kaminari, but Kirishima what they actually do for their training. As Kirishima would say that that's intense. That's awesome. That's so manly. As we would then have Deku looking at Bakugo as he would smile. And this is when they would notice Mineta actually peeping at the girl's locker room through a tiny hole. As we would then have Deku smashing, smashing Mineta across the head with his bat. As Mineta would be on the ground, you know, bleeding a little bit. As he would then tell Mineta that if he wants to go peep at, peep at something, he should peep at this bat. As Mineta would look at him and say, uh, uh, what are you doing? As Mineta would be on the ground in pain. As Deku would tell him next time not to peep over there. As he would perceive that his future lady is going to be in, in there. As Mineta would look at Deku and he would proceed to say, yes, sir. As... You already know. This is when we would then have Deku 
oh sorry for that noise as we would then have Deku pretty much just going outside with the rest of them and he would basically be throwing the ball at him seeing as he got the rescue points as well as 169 so we would end up accumulating about let's say 200 points yeah let's say 200 points and yeah this is when we would then have Deku be throwing the ball as he would grab it and he would throw it actually no not throw it but Deku would say that if it's okay for him to use his bat. As Aizawa would say that they're not supposed to be able to use that. But he doesn't see why not. Is it part of his quirk? As Deku would say something like that. It's what I'm going to be using when I fight. So I think it'll be allowed, right? As Aizawa would say, whatever. As he would look towards Deku. And Deku would then pretty much just ask Bakugo to shoot an explosion right at him. As Bakugo would say, huh. I'm not doing that. That is just going to make you stronger. As Deck would say. As he would then look towards uh, Electric Boy. And he would proceed to tell him to zap him with an ele electricity. As Aizawa would say. What are you doing? As this one Deck would say to calm down. As he would then tell Kaminari to just do it. As Kaminari would say. Alright man. You asked for it. As he would shock him with 1 million volts. And Deck would feel the pain coursing through himself. As Deck would say. Ah, perfect. As he would charge up 30% of one for all throughout his body. On top of the Zenkai boost that he just got. Which is essentially what Metal Bat pretty much has. It's pretty much just Zenkai boost that only that wear off that last temporarily. Anyways, we would then have Deku looking at looking towards, you know, where Aizawa was at. As he would then say, watch this. As he would throw the baseball into the air. And he would pretend to smack that thing into orbit. Yup, into orbit. Yep, 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 yep. And Bakugo seeing that would have his jaw drop to the ground. As he would then say, okay, that's that's not okay. Ugh. Excuse me for that. Anyways, we would then have Bakugo saying, that's not okay. How did you get so strong? As Deku would say that he just trained with All Might. And he would proceed to tell Bakugo that he'll tell him after class. As Bakugo would say, all right. And they would basically go through the rest of the things with Deku actually being interested in this girl, you know, with the orange hair or ginger, I guess you could say. As Kendo would have actually gotten a great score using her big hand quirk. But eh, should I have her quirk be big? Yeah, I'm going to have it be big hands. Who cares? Anyways, we would then have uh, Deku basically looking at Kendo right after class. As Baku was about to ask him if he could tell him, but he would then notice what Deku was up to. As he would smirk and tell him to go get him. As we would then have Deku walking up to Kendo and asking her if she's busy later. As she would say, oh, it's it's you. You you got the best points in the, in the in the little quirk assessment. As Deku would say, of course I did. And uh, I'm, I'm going to pause this real quick. Give me a second. All right, I'm back. Anyways, as Kendo would look at Deku and say, oh, I like the confidence. As Deku would proceed to basically put his hand like right beside Kendo before she could take another step. And he would proceed to ask her... How about it? How about you and me go grab something to eat a little bit? As Kendo would say, sure. And they would proceed to basically go out and let's just... What am I What am I in the mood for right now? Uh, They'd go get some pasta. Yeah, they, I'm in the mood for some pasta. So yeah, they're going to go get some pasta. And, you know, of course, they would have a pretty dope, dope little interaction. As Deku would actually get to know Kendo a little bit. And he would actually realize that she's actually kind of strong. As we would then have, you know, Deku asking her where she learned martial arts. And she would proceed to tell Deku that she actually was taught by her grandpa. As Deku would look at her and say, huh, well, the old man definitely knew what he was doing. As, of course, we would then have Deku looking at her as, you know, she would say, of course he did. As, you know, this is when we're actually, yeah, should I have this be the... No, 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 I'm not doing that, I'm not doing that, that's crazy. Anyways, we would then have Deku basically ending off with Kendo... As he would ask her if she wants to come, you know, maybe, maybe come over to his house to make the date a little longer, make it last longer. And she would say, of course she does. As we would then have them go to Deku's house and there was supposed to be nobody home. But as soon as Deku unlocks the door, he would see his sister there. She would say, hi. As she would then say, where, where were you that you didn't get home on time? As Deku would say, I, I was just at a as he would then hold a hand out for you know kendo to stay outside and she would say who's out there in the door as deck would say it's nobody and she would say oh really uh unless you show me who it is right now i'm gonna tell mom exactly what happened today as deck would say okay 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 as he would proceed to tell kendo to just come out already as kendo would look at deku and say okay you're really letting your sister boss you around like this i thought you were mr confidence as deku would look at his sister and say she's the boss and he would proceed to basically, you know, introduce her to Kendo. As uh, she would say, huh, well, now I'm going to hang out with you guys. And she would ruin it.
she, <laughs> she would ruin the entire the entire uh, study session that they were gonna be having so anyways this is when the very next day would come around and we're just gonna go ahead and get into the heroes versus villains as the team that's gonna be con that's what the team's gonna actually act a little, little, little as what the team's actually gonna consist of is going to be deku and bakugo versus let's say todoroki and tokiyami yeah todoroki and tokiyami those are the teams that they're actually going to be going up against anyways of course we would then have deku and todoroki oh no no, no deku and bakugo looking at each other they would fist bump and say this is going to be too easy as they're going to say that they know exactly how to fight in synchronous but little do they know that that time they spent apart from each other they changed their combat styles quite a bit so they're not exactly going to be as sync as in sync as they believe they will Anyways, with that being said, we would then have them essentially looking at each other as they would smile and bump fists as they would say, alright, let's go get them, as they would say, what's the plan, and they would then proceed to laugh as they would say, there is no plan, let's just go, as Deku would say, is just kidding, as they would basically barge in there, and we would then have Bakugo basically realizing that it's getting cold, and that's gonna make it hard for him to sweat, as he would say that they need to take out whoever's producing the ice quickly, as Deku would say, got it. And they would proceed to, you know, enter the levels where Todoroki and, and Tokiyami are at. As Tokiyami would have Dark Shadow coming out of nowhere, going in to attack Bakugo. As Bakugo would dodge barely, and Deku would proceed to come in and smack Tokiyami. As he would smack him away, and he would proceed to look towards Tokiyami. As he would tell him that this is a battle he's not going to win. <gasps> as Tokiyami would look towards Deku and tell him to look behind him. As Shoto would be there, as he would shoot a geyser of ice straight at them. And before anything else can happen, Deku would, oh no, Bakugo would use his gauntlets and blast it straight at Todoroki's ice thing. As it definitely would have built up barely enough for him to create one small charge of it. As Bakugo would end up looking towards Todoroki and smiling. As he would say, <laughs> looks like you didn't restrict the entire ability of my quirk. As we would then have Deku looking at, um, well, uh, <clears throat> as we would then have Deku looking at Bakugo as he would grab Bakugo's arm and he would swing him, sending him flying over to Todoroki, as he would shoot an explosion at Todoroki, and Bakugo would actually end up taking this dub, seeing as they're in an enclosed area, and this is not exactly the best place for Todoroki to fight in. Seeing as I don't exactly think that Todoroki's that great at far combat, at like fighting from distance, is essentially what I believe. You guys can think, I mean, close close combat, no, not, not long distance, sorry. So you guys can let me know below down in the comments if you guys think Bakugo would go or Todoroki would win at this point. Anyways, with that being said, Deku would then lunge at Tokiyami as he would proceed to basically throw swings at Tokiyami's direction and Tokiyami would then proceed to try to pretty much get Deku without him noticing but uh, it would be a futile effort as Deku would use Black Whip to you know, pull him towards himself as he would smack to Tokiyami right on the head having him be knocked out as they would then go to the bomb room and they would proceed to touch the bomb as it would be announced the hero team won as this is when we're now actually going to have them essentially just walk out of there. As Deku would ask Kendo if she wants to go home the right way this time. As she would say, are you sure your sister isn't going to be there? As Deku would have a little bit of an anger mark on his head. You know, the, the classic little uh, red marks that anime characters have on their head. As we would then have her saying that they should probably go to her house instead. As Deku would look at her and say, good idea. They would go over to Kendo's house and they would proceed to start studying, hitting math, hitting the books. You know, they'd, they'd, they'd start getting down. But anyways, this is when we would then have... <laughs> this is when we would then have Deku and Bakugo essentially uh, talking in the bus on the way to the USJ. As, you know, we're just going to go ahead and skip onto that part. I mean, there's really nothing to really cover during this point. As, you know, of course, Deku and Kendo are getting better. And Deku and Bakugo are, you know, pretty much becoming the dynamic duo of the class. Or the two top strongest. As, of course, we would then have them arrive to the USJ. And, uh, you know, Aizawa would tell them to gut out in the file line. With 13 giving her usual boring speech. Kurogiri teleporting them all away. And, of course... We would have most of the things result in how they did in canon up to the point where deku actually gets actually no nah, let's let's say that they don't actually get teleported see as soon as kuragiri arrives deku would say awesome hero training as he would send black whip to grab 
Kurogiri's metal portion, where his metal piece that basically stops anybody from hurting him, and he would hit him right on the mark. Without even realizing that that's what Deku did, he would then pull Kurogiri, and as Kurogiri would be dragged in by with the mist by his metal portion, and we would then have Deku basically grabbing the bat as he would smack Kurogiri a little harder than he probably should have, saying that this is fun, they're gonna fight against some, you know, fake villains. As this is when Aizawa would say, that's not a fake villain. As he would then get himself ready, and Deku would say, oh, it's not? As they would then proceed to basically look look, look, look around, and we would then have them all basically say that they should definitely go outside. As Aizawa would tell 13 to get the kids outside. As 13 would basically tell the kids to destroy the, break the door down, and of course, Kirishima and Sato would be on it. As they would say, bam, 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 just smash that door down. They would huff, and they'd puff, and they'd blow, and you know, you guys get the point. Anyways, we would then have them essentially do that, and as that's happening, Deku would proceed to basically rush on in there. So he would proceed to start beating down on villains with Aizawa. As this is essentially how that little situation is going down, and Ido would have blitzed off to go take, to go call All Might or any, any backups that they can get. Anyways, as I was saying, Deku would proceed to pretty much just be beating down on villains as this is when Shigaraki would get annoyed by what was going on as he would say, Nomo, get that brat. And this is when the Nomo would rush straight at Deku as it punches Deku, but Deku was barely able to dodge and like tank the blow with the bat as he would stop the, the force of impact from hitting him and Deku would be blown away as Deku would say, <laughs> looks like this is going to be fun, as he would say, Katsuki! Get down here as Baku would shoot explosions and he would come down there as Deku and Baku would look at each other and say that they're going to have fun taking this thing down as Baku would smirk and they would begin to basically try to hit it with Bakugo trying to use explosions but later then getting flung around by the Nomu and Deku activating 30% full cowling with him also activating Black Whip to basically grab the Nomu and stop hit from hitting Bakugo as ba Bakugo would realize that he's being more of a liability to Deku than helping him out as he would try his absolute best but any of the explosions that he would land on the Nomu would basically be an effortless uh you know thing it wouldn't really amount to anything as we would then have Bakugo basically realizing this as he would tell Deku that he actually can't inflict any damage on this thing that he's gonna have to do it on his own as Deku would say that he, that's not a problem by him as he would then proceed to charge up the one all for one no one for all throughout his entire body pushing himself to his very limits as he would use 50 percent and this this is when he would activate another quirk this being float out of necessity as he would begin to jump into the air and fly around as Baku would say what and this is when Deku would begin to basically fly straight at the Nomu so he would begin to basically smack it as he would lift up the Nomu in the way that Deku did to Shigaraki in the manga and we would of course have him be throwing blow for blows as we would then have Deku essentially going in there and uh sorry to those of you who don't want to get spoiled probably should have mentioned that anyways we would then have Deku going in there smacking the Nomu like crazy as he would land blow after blow after blow ugh, at the Nomu as the Nomu would begin to take damage and it would begin to scream as the Nomu would then proceed to basically rip the black the black whip tendrils out of you know the air as he would proceed to start falling down at the ground and we would then have Deku basically who can't hold it onto it much longer essentially just going down with the Nomu as the Nomu would throw a punch straight at Deku's face, sending him flying away. As Deku would get up bloody and battered as he would say, probably shouldn't have done that. I don't know if you guys understood that, but that's a kick in it reference. Anyways, we would then have Deku blitzing at the Nomu as he smashes its head, giving it a blow that actually sends the Nomu's head flying clean off of its body. As Deku would look towards Shigaraki, who at this point was cheering on, saying that the Nomu had regeneration and that that didn't do anything. As Deku would say, oh really? Regeneration? As this is when Deku would charge at the Nomu and he would stab the bat straight through it. As he would begin to just smack the Nomu repeatedly. As the Nomu's blood would spill everywhere and All Might would appear on the scene. As he would say, I am here. As he would see his successor just smashing at this creature-like thing. As All Might would then see that the other villain was there, as he would begin to rush at Kuro as a, no, Shigaraki, as he would take him down with one fell punch. And right before he was actually going to take Shigaraki into custody, 
a villain who we most of you guys probably didn't expect to appear at this point would actually come in all for one would appear with a black portal as he would try to teleport all of his, you know, his his uh, men away. That being Kurogiri, Shigaraki, you know, the, the dead body of the Nomu so that they can't have any evidence. As he would try to do that, but right before he could do that, Deku would, you know, be right in front of Offer One. As he would smack Offer One on the side, which Offer One would end up blocking with telekinesis. As he would send, you know, Deku back flying. And we would then have Offer One basically chuckling as he would say, All might, I was going to do this a lot later on, but I guess your time ends here as he would charge up the quirks and he would proceed to basically have shigaraki kuragiri and the rest of the nomu's remains behind him as he would charge up his arm in the same fashion that he did in the anime and he would proceed to throw a mighty blow straight at all might as all might in the offer one fight would begin and this is when deck would be blown back by the sheer wind pressure of this as deck would jump on in there and he would try to help all might but every time that he does Offer one would just send Deku flying back, injuring him more and more and more until he would get a giant Zenkai boost or his fighting spear would go off the charts. And Deku would blitz right at Offer one before his eyes can even register as he would for an instant activate 100% of one for all's full power as he would smash Offer one's skull inside of his head, sending his head clean off as Offer One would have actually been taken care of right at that moment. And as soon as that happens, the rest of the villains would arrive. As they would see what Deku did, and they would proceed to basically look at him as all as they would look down upon him. And before they could even say anything, All Might would say that he actually did the right thing. And that they can't judge him for what he did. Saying that, well, he probably would have done the same thing if he had been in his shoes. As they would proceed to basically take it easy on Deku. And they would proceed to basically have the normal cleanup that they do in canon. And, uh, yeah. Anyways, this is when we're then actually going to jump on over to the to the one week break. As we would have Deku and Kendo just doing a little bit of studying at Kendo's house, if you get what I'm saying. As we're now just going to skip on over to the day of the UA Sports Festival. Which, you know, the speech... It would actually be said that Deku was going to give it, but instead of doing a normal speech, he would pull a Bakugo and say, My name is Izuku Midoriya, and I'm going to win the sports festival. As he would drop the mic and walk off the stands. As people would begin to boo! Say boo! You know, this kid is not going to win! He's probably weak! As little do they know, Deku was able to defeat all for one. Literally the antagonist of the entire series with the swing of his bat. It was... It was insane to say the least. With that being said, we would then have Deku essentially getting off of there as the race would be announced. And can you guess who wins it? L let me ask you guys something. Do you guys think that a, a Deku with float, black whip, uh, you know, the little, what's it called? <clears throat> the fighting spirit, aka Zenkai boosts, and the already insane strength of Metal Bat Deku? Who do you think is going to win this little race? Exactly. Deku. Deku smacks. He ends up beating uh, Bakugo by a landslide using his float ability to basically just fly on into the air and basically j take big giant jumps in the way that All Might does to the all the way to the finish line as it would take him nothing but three big leaps to arrive there as he would end up getting first place and in terms of what the cavalry battle teams would consist of they're going to be a little different than they were in canon. The team is actually going to revolve around Deku. Kendo, Bakugo, and Mei Hatsume, who would have actually ended up getting on the team due to the fact that, well, she actually recognized that bat. And she would proceed to walk up to Deku telling him that she was actually the one who made that for him. She was, you know, interning at UA for their little support course, and she was the one who actually made it, telling Deku that it was probably one of the hardest challenges she's ever had. As Deku would say, oh, I guess you can be on my team. And, uh... <laughs> This is a uh, this is a pretty broken team. Todoroki would try it, but it's it's not gonna pan out, man. I'm sorry, it's just not gonna work. <laughs> this Deku is going to smack this man into the ground. It's not okay. What happens when Todoroki tries it? Deku, when he meet when Todoroki gets close and tries to use his ice, would smack Todoroki off of his cow off of his you know his team, sending him flying onto the ground as his team his entire team would be eliminated. And in terms of the battles. Come on, <laughs> like, the, what, what do you want me to say, Shinso? What is, actually, Shinso could probably get Deku. 
you know what? Y y you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. As soon as the battle would start, Shinso would look at Deku as he would tell him it must be great to have a powerful quirk like yours. As Deku would say, <laughs> instead of whining about what your quirk is, why not just tra- As he would stop. And before he can say another word, he would then proceed to see the vestiges of one for all. As in the moment that Deku was actually seeing them, he would have actually been snapped out of it. And of course, we would then have Deku going on to defeat Shin, so not saying another word. Seeing all of the success, seeing all of the people who, you know, he currently is able to basically see. As we would, of course, then have Deku basically looking towards the successors of one for all. Being able to see none other than Nana Shimura, the Black Whip guy. I don't know his name. Um, oh, all right, I'm back. Sorry, it got a little noise in the background and I didn't want to record with that. So I kind of had to stop the recording, but where was I? Oh yeah. So the successors of one for all, Deku would be seeing all of the vestiges as Deku would look around and he would see that he actually can't see a lot of them. He would then get out of the vestige world right before, you know, Shinto could basically tell him to call, to walk out of the arena as Deku's danger sense. Yup, gonna give him that danger sense early on. Deku's danger sense would kick in and he would proceed to essentially look towards Shinso as he would turn his head to the side and he would then proceed to basically run straight at Shinso as Shinso would be confused as to why his mind control didn't work and before Shinso can say another word, Deku would hit him off of the arena with his bat as we would then have the rest of the, pe the, rest of the matches go by uh, being kind of uneventful. Oh wait, no, Bakugo. I guess I could cover it. It's not gonna be. It's not gonna work out in Bakugo's favor, <laughs> just to say the least. Black Whip, Float, Danger Sense, One for All, uh, Zenkai. It's 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 not okay. Anyways, Deku and Bakugo would start as Bakugo as Bakugo would rush at him, and seeing as Deku wants to make this fight as fun and last as long as possible, he would proceed to essentially start pacing himself as he would not even activate one for all, and they would actually be going blow for blow. It'd be a very good battle. Oh, and before I continue with the video, in case you guys hear any background noise or some doors closing or some screaming, just bear with it since it's about to end and it should relatively be calm. But with that being said though, you know, he would rush at Deku and Deku would proceed to basically dodge him as he would basically be hitting Bakugo and Bakugo would be lining a couple blows on Deku, increasing Deku's strength to the point where they're both basically starting to go blow for blow with each other and they're actually starting to even out. Of course, Bakugo was had the, had the upper hand first, but once, you know, Deku started getting the, the what's called the Zenkai boost, I guess you could say, or not really Zenkai boost, but the fighting spirit boosts, pretty much just enhancing him, he would proceed to do a lot better against Bakugo. And it would get to the point where the boost would just be going up and up, forcing Bakugo to basically try to resort to long range attacks. But seeing as that was not working out, Bakugo would proceed to basically keep trying his hardest, not giving up. And Deku would definitely respect that. As they would continue the battle and Deku would proceed to basically amp up the antics, which would proceed to lead into Deku essentially using a black whip sma grabbing Bakugo and knocking him out of the arena as Deku would go on to the final match which would actually be quite uneventful. The final match would pretty much consist of Deku versus Tokiyami as uh, Tokiyami gets eliminated. GG. That's how the entrance exists. <laughs> That's how the US Sports Festival ends up panning out. Anyways, with that being said, we're now actually going to basically just skip on over to the day when they basically arrive in class, where they're all essentially just picking their hero names. As, you know, everybody would be picking their usual names as in canon, with Bakugo picking Dynamite. And of course, we're going to have Deku picking the hero name of, uh, let's say metal bat yeah metal bat metal bat is of course gonna be his hero name and he's gonna be the fighting hero metal bat as of course you guys can already know exactly where deck was gonna be going for his internship none other than my man gran torino of course he would take the train over there and before he actually goes to gran torino of course we're gonna need a little bit of a study session as uh you guys know it's going down. Anyways, we would then have him arrive at Gran Torino's with him pretty much trying to play that, you know, little funny prank that he did on Izuku with a ketchup. But as soon as Deku arrives there and sees him laying there, he would grab Gran Torino's. He would begin to shake him aggressively saying, wake up, old man, as he would say, stop playing. As Gran Torino would say, wow, you hold back not even on someone of my age. 
And Deck would say, you don't count. You're extremely strong for someone of your age. As Gran Torino would say, all right, very well, let's get to training. As he would proceed to basically train Deku, and by train, I mean clobber him until Deku gets the strength to clobber him back. But Torino would basically proceed to just keep clobbering him, using the room around him to basically dodge Deku. And he would proceed to basically just try to get Deku to up, up the percentage of one frog that he can, you know, pretty much let out. As we're gonna say that by the end of it and before they can actually go track down stain deku would actually end up getting the smoke screen quirk as a yep yes sir anyways they would go on the train and seeing as the league of villains was actually taken down in the usj arc there would actually be no nomu incident however ida would still definitely be getting t you know injured and the reason that i'm going to say that they actually made a stop is because gran torino decided that they're going to go there seeing as the hero killer was around and he wanted to see if deku could handle him anyways with that being said they would go around looking for the hero killer late at night when they would eventually run in to seeing ida be almost being about to get stabbed by stain as deku would use his black whip tendrils to whip stain over to him as he would fly himself and stain up into the air and stain would throw a couple of knives at deku's direction but deku would be using flow and black whip in in uh, pretty much synchronous as he would proceed to pull stain towards him and deku would grab the bat as he would smack stain across the head sending him you know into unconsciousness and he would then land on the ground with stain pretty much on the ground knocked out as this is when deku would lower his guard and as he does that stain would actually cut deku as he would begin to lick deku's blood and Deku would be sitting there paralyzed as he wouldn't be able to move a muscle and Stain would then lick, lick more of the blood off as he would then smile and look at Gran Torino who simply jets off to Stain smacking him away from Deku and he would, have to, he would proceed to have to defend Deku against Stain for the following time that Deku's pretty much uncaught that he can't move for as Deku of course being a type O would definitely be able to get out of there and he would end up smacking Stain around as soon as he gets up basically being a little more more aggressive than he should have been seeing as he was like kind of angry that stain was able to catch him off guard with that being said though deku would of course do that and this is when we would actually have it so that let's see we're actually gonna have it so that deku uh no 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 he takes him in and the dog guy pretty much tells deku that well regardless of what he did he still wasn't allowed so gran torino is actually gonna get the credit but seeing as Gran Torino's retired, they're just still going to give it to him and say that he did a, a civic act of duty or something. Since he still has a license, he can still technically do it. As they would pass it on as Gran Torino's accomplishment, and Deck would go back to class, basically being angered by the fact that, well, he had to do that all by himself. With that being said though, we would then have him go back to class where they would all be told about the race and Deku would then proceed to scold Ida immediately telling him why he did that. As Ida would tell Deku that he wouldn't understand, his brother got almost killed by that freak. As Deku would say that he can understand, if that would have been his sister out there he would have gone to the ends of the earth to find the person who hurt him. As he would put a hand on Ida's shoulder and he would proceed to tell him not to do something like that again. He's a class rep after all right? as Ida would look towards Deku and kind of smile, as Deku would then punch him in the face and Ida would be sent flying, as Deku would say, that's for making me have to save you. As Ida would get up and basically say, ah, fair enough, as we would then have the race and this event would go as you guys would expect. Blow, Black Whip, Spider-Man. He would just pull a Spider-Man and proceed to basically get to All Might before anybody else can do it, which would proceed to lead into Deku essentially winning the race and they would proceed to be informed about the finals the little thing that they of course have to do to pretty much grad to get their uh to go on to the forest training arc and of course they would be informed of whoever fails would not be going now this is when we're now actually going to cut on over to essentially the one week that they're exactly that they're basically going to have to study as Deku would actually end up going to Kendo's house and Deku would end up doing a little bit of studying both ways if you get what i'm putting down anyways with that being said he would end up hitting the books with cami real ones and they would end up doing a lot of studying with deku getting pretty angry at the fact that all this stuff is so hard why does he need this stuff it's, he's doing he's gonna be a hero after all he doesn't need to know what's one plus one 
as Cammy. Uh, no, no, not Cammy. Sorry, Kendo. Sorry, I was getting confused with another video that I'm gonna be dropping soon. Anyways, Deku would proceed to essentially look, and you know they would proceed to keep doing their stuff. Anyways, with that being said, though, we would then have um, them all pretty much just going through the motions as uh, Deku would be going through a lot more than uh, a lot more <laughs> than Kendo would, and they would do a little bit of training with Deku pretty much teaching her how to become a little stronger, I guess you could say. This is when we're going to cut on over to the day of the finals, and of course we know we got to have All Might and Bakugo, oh wait no, All Might versus Deku and Bakugo, which would actually start off as a really good battle. Deku would be using nothing but 30% along with Bakugo's explosions to create smoke screens and Deku would no do nothing but heighten that up as Bakugo would come in out of nowhere and land attacks on All Might weakening him down slowly with Deku deciding that he probably shouldn't go all out but he would then grab, use his black whip tendrils to grab All Might's leg, sweep him onto the ground and smash his bat right on All Might's face but he knew he would be able to dodge it as All Might would get out of the way and Deku would use his black whip to send All Might into the sky as he would use flow to go into the air and he would throw Bakugo into the sky as Bakugo would throw a full power explosion at All Might and All Might would then come crashing down with smoke covering his vision as Deku would then proceed to come in out of nowhere and right before Deku could strike him All Might would send a punch right at the air to send himself flying into a different direction as Deku would proceed to essentially look at All Might and wonder how he did that as of course he would use his danger sense to dodge the wind pressure as he would continue to use float to fly over to all might and he would proceed to hit him down onto the ground as we would then have all might and deku getting into a fist fight with deku pretty much putting the bat down and they would proceed to get into a battle which would lead to deku getting nothing but more and more powerful leading into deku smacking all might around and actually ending up winning the battle successor beats the master perfect anyways this is when we would then have them all be told about you know what's going to happen next and Deku and Bakugo would end up winning the battle with Deku of course being able to take down All Might seeing as he has all of these you know new quirks at this point and since you know we're having and since you know All Might is at this point this one All Might would finally revert into a small might force after taking a blow from Deku which would have actually taken him out unconscious and the rest of the class would have actually realized All Might's secret of course this would lead into All Might retiring as a pro hero and we would then go to to the forest training arc which um it's gonna be very fun and eventful for deku if you get what i'm putting down anyways they would of course be put on the bus and mandalay would of course throw them off the cliff telling all of the kids to basically try their bust and to get there in about three hours as of course they would arrive late and they actually know would they arrive? no they would definitely not arrive late let's just say that deku and kendo will go ahead of the other people with them basically sneaking off to go, you know, do some usual studying, if you get what I'm saying. Anyways, with that being said though, we would then have the rest of the class arrive as they would proceed to basically be tired and exhausted. As they would see Deku and Kami with Cam, oh wait, oh, I, I, <laughs> Kendo, who would pretty much have her legs be weak, arms are heavy, there's vomit on her, you <laughs> know. Comment down below if you know where that reference is from. Anyways, with that being said, we would then have Deku essentially going over to his classmates as they're pretty angry at him and Bakugo especially saying why didn't he take him with him as he would tell Bakugo what he did and Bakugo would say, oh, never mind, respect. As we would have Bakugo forgive him and of course Mandalay and the rest of the people would come outside saying that the food's ready as Aizawa would then give Deku a stare telling him that pretty much signaling to him that he knows what happened. As he just is going to let it slide just this one time, but not to let it happen again. And of course, we would then have Deku going inside and having a good meal with the rest of them. With, of course, the events that happen in the normal canon with Mineta pretty much just uh, climbing the wall, Deku getting to know things about, well, uh, Koda, and he would then end up finding some stuff out about Mandalay as well, with Mandalay telling Deku what had actually really gone down with Koda's parents, and Deku actually realizing that his parents are the water hose heroes. They were pretty popular back in the day, and they were killed in a tragic accident by a villain named Muscular or something like that. He had a really powerful quirk. And of course, we would then are going to have, you know, no interaction with the villains. They're would be no real reason for Deku to even fight them, seeing as I had already stated that the villains were taken care of. So in terms of what happens during the Force training arc, 
The Forge training arc would result in Deku essentially just training hit one for all a little bit more and getting one step closer to unlocking his next quirk. At this point, of course, he has Float, he has Black Whip, he has Danger Sense, he has Smoke Screen, he has... What other quirks does Deku have in the manga right now? I don't know, but yeah, he has what the things that I just mentioned. And as for the rest of the quirks, seeing as we don't actually know what's, what they are, I'm just going to start pacing myself. At this point, Deku could of course use 45% of one for all after the forest training arc, and he would have actually ended up getting a bit of a mastery for the quirks that all for one access, no, one for all gives him access to. Sorry about that. And of course, we would have Deku come out out as a new man, doing a little bit of training with Kendo as well if you if you get what I'm putting down. Anyways, of course, we would have Deku pretty much coming out of there. And this is when we're actually going to have to start covering the uh, the little provisional hero license. Give me a second, guys. I need to go drink some water. Anyways, of course, provisional hero license. This is when we would have Deku essentially going through it. And in terms of how this goes, I kind of really despise the provisional hero license arc i mean i really don't like it it's so boring the best part about it is well of course the introduction to inasa and characters like that of course cami was a pretty cool addition but then realizing that it wasn't actually her quirk was kind of weird but anyways with that being said though uh let's just say baku ends up passing barely todoroki still fails because inasa and deku never actually ended up talking to him telling him that his quirk is his it's not his father's of course, you know, just the usual stuff. With that being said, though, we would then have basically the next arc, which is the overhaul arc and probably one of the last ones at that. Anyways, this is when we would have, you know, of course, Deku essentially going into class as they would all be sitting down. And this is when the class class, uh, their upper classmen walk in. These, of course, being the big three of UA the strongest and the best of the best from the class. Of course, they would walk inside and the interactions would almost go the same as canon up to the point where Mirio pretty much tells them that, well, they're gonna be fighting him and he just wants to show them that they're inexperienced just like he does in the original canon. With that being said, he would end up grabbing them all and telling them to go outside and they would proceed to start fighting a little bit. Of course, he would end up whooping everybody except for Bakugo and Deku, who both were actually able to dodge his blows and they would both go back to back trying to fight against Mirio. Mirio would actually end up catching Deku off guard, coming up right where Deku's... Uh, little special area was and he would punch him straight there his deck would fall onto the ground and he would pretty much just writhe in pain as deku would slowly get up eyes glowing red as he would begin to charge something he's he's done only once before 50 percent of one for all through his body as he would get the biggest boost he's ever gotten from his <gasps> fighting spirit quirk as he would speed blitz Mirio, and he would proceed to break Mirio's right rib, smashing it with the metal bat, as Mirio wouldn't have been even wouldn't have even been able to react. And we would then have Deku just massacring this man to the point where the rest of the big three students had to step in and try to stop him. And the rest of class one A would tell him to calm down. As Deku would say, "Do you not know what he just did to me? He hit me in my." As they would say, "We we know, but it was just he, it was just training." He, Probably didn't mean it. You can just get healed by recovery, girl. As Deku would calm down. And Kendo would, of course, had to come in here. And she was the only reason Deku was able to calm down. With that being said, though, when Mirio actually tries to ask Deku to go into the internship with Sir Nidai, he would, of course, actually deny him. He would tell him, of course, he's not going anywhere near him. With Mirio trying to befriend Deku and apologizing, but Deku would not be having any of this. Instead, Deku would decide that he's going to go back with Gran Torino, and he would actually end up pretty much being called once they have the encounter with Overhaul. Mirio would still go out on his little walk, his patrol and he would still end up finding out about Shisaki. Of course, they would then have the raid and for the raid, Gran Torino and Deku would actually be called due to a suggestion from All Might, seeing as he would end up revealing that, well, he was retired and that who he has been training is him and they want to see what he's like in the field. So they would of course invite Deku and, you know, of course Gran Torino to basically help handle the situation as we would have Deku arrive there and he would proceed to basically start taking down the villains that Deku had originally done and going past other people that weren't really up for his time. 
Of course, we would then have him arrive from in front of Mirio before Mirio could actually get his quirky raised and right before he was about to get shot with a bullet. Deku would smack the little bullet away with his bat as it would actually end up going and hitting Overhaul. It would stab into him permanently, erasing Overhaul's quirk. As Overhaul's eyes would widen and he would look towards his minion as he would say, Why would you? And before he could even finish that sentence, Deku would be in front of him. Doing that same stare that Deku had done in the original when he was reeling his arm back and was about to punch him. Deku would come in there and he would smash Overhaul's ribs in as Overhaul would be on the ground writhing in pain. And he would proceed to blitz the other man that he has before he can even use the quirky racing bolts, bullets on Deku. As Deku would have been able to dodge any and all, you know, bad instances that happen. Meaning, Sir Nidai, he survives. Mirio keeps his quirk. And Eri was saved without as much, you know, uh, without as much, you know, battle damage from, well, the little encounter that they had. With that being said, though, that would pretty much mark the end of the Overhaul or the Shisaki or Yakuza gang arc. Of course, the League of Villains are taken out, so when Overhaul was taken into custody, he was taken in as a normal prisoner and taken to prison. But when Deku found out about what happened with Eri, oh, he would not let it slide. See, we're going to go into a little bit of a moment where things go a little haywire. See, about one week later, Hisaki would be on trial, and they would basically be questioning him. In case you guys don't know, uh, Overhaul's name is Shisaki. Anyways, he would go inside the room, and he would begin to pretty much interrogate Shisaki. As he would put the put the chair in front of the door, just like in a Batman fashion, and he would proceed to essentially just go over to him as he would sit down in front of him with his bat. Pretty much as he's, he'd be chewing a little bit of uh, uh, a gum as he would be looking at Shisaki, telling him so. The things you did to this girl, huh? You mind explaining to me why you were doing this? As Overhaul would explain his intentions and his plan, seeing that he already can't do it anyway, so he might as well just tell him, and his entire operation as well as army of men were taken down. And after hearing things, Deku would smash his bat onto Overhaul's hand, as he would proceed to tell him, you used these to, to hurt that girl, didn't you? To traumatize her, and to ruin her childhood. As Overhaul would proceed to basically scream in pain, as we would have Deku who basically continues to beat on this man Overhaul relentlessly as the pro heroes would try to get into the room. And of course, we would then have them all bust in there as they would restrain Deku, but by this point Deku would have hurt this man beyond recognition. As he would have definitely gotten what he deserved and seeing as if this actually got out to the media he would definitely probably have his hero license revoked they would end up keeping it on the low seeing as they know exactly what he did as well and they would just end up you know letting Deku slide for this one but if this happens again they're gonna have to you know say what really happened in this situation as Deku would spit on overhaul saying that he better not try nothing like that again because if he hears of anybody just like him or if he hears that he's causing any trouble in the prison, he'll handle him personally. After this, of course, we're going to be covering the gentle criminal lurk. As, of course, Deku would handle that. He would handle that, of course. You already know my boy would use his smoke screen before Gentle could even get the chance. And man would take him out swiftly before Gentle could even become a problem. And this... This is where we're actually going to be ending off the story. In case some of you guys are wondering, yo, D uh, Zether, what happened to the Liberation Army? After a couple of years, of course, Deku and Bakugo would have ended up forming some pretty dope agencies, with Deku and Bakugo being the number one and two heroes, as it was prophesized. Uh, Kendo would have definitely been a part of it, and we would then also have it so that we would essentially have Deku and Bakugo taking them out when they grew older. When the Liberation Army grew too big to basically handle, uh, basically, him and Bakugo would have been tasked taking them down, with of course some older heroes such as Endeavor and Mirko helping along the way. And they would have ended up taking down the Liberation Army, so for those of you who are wondering, that's what happened. In case you guys want a more detailed explanation, I guess you guys could kind of just think about what would happen. Uh, I mean, how do you guys think that Deku in the manga would handle it? Just picture that, and that's essentially what ended up happening. With that being said, though, guys, this is going to mark the ending to what if Deku had Metal Bat's fighting spirit? I hope you guys enjoyed the video, seeing as it was actually pretty fun to make. I got to do a different take on what Deku's personality and what Metal Bat's was as a whole. Yeah, there was a couple characters that maybe I didn't get to flesh out a bit, such as, you know, Kendo's relationship with Deku, but I... 
I, I mean, if I got to redo this series maybe later on, I might flesh that out a little bit more. I also kind of regret not, you know, using a Metal Bat's little sister in here a little bit more, but I still love this, this, uh, this, you know, this movie either way. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as you guys can see on screen, probably right now, there's gonna be about four videos up on my face right now of my character or just the the little the little picture that you guys have been seeing the entire video go ahead and click on any of those in case you guys want to see any of my other content and i would definitely recommend checking out my zenitsu deku or thunder breathing which is actually it's 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 a redo of an old series that i did and i think you guys will most definitely enjoy it if you guys enjoy this one but with that being said you guys know the drill it has been your boy zether and i am out peace